Hanna, and this is STEM Works, the show where we explore careers in science, technology, engineering, and math, and what makes them so much fun. We take you inside businesses and talk to professionals in their field and explore what they do. And today, we are headed over to visit with our friends at Wood Rogers to see what it is that they do. Have you ever wondered how cities and towns are built? Of course, you all probably know that architects and engineers design and construct everything, from roads to bridges to buildings. But who plans these cities to make sure they are safe and efficient? First, someone has to make sure that the land that cities and neighborhoods are built upon is even suitable for building. Secondly, buildings need water and power to function, as well as roads to get to them. Water not only has to enter the building, but it also has to leave the building correctly. Neighborhoods also need to be built in a way that drains rain and floodwaters properly. All of these things are called infrastructure, which is a term used to describe this basic framework that is required to make a city function. While most of the infrastructure in cities is hidden from sight because it is usually buried underground, it is the job of civil engineers to make sure that the cities we live in have the best infrastructure possible. Wood Rogers is a civil engineering company that employs the best civil engineers to ensure that our towns and cities are designed and built correctly. As part of the civil engineering design process, they do everything from planning to surveying and drafting, as well as conducting soil and ground testing to make sure that what they design is going to work as it should and last as long as possible. So today, we'll have a chat with civil engineer Jillian Wilbrecht and assistant civil engineer Kyle Castle, who dropped in design neighborhoods, as well as Michael Detweiler, one of the land surveyors at Wood Rogers, to find out what it takes to plan and design our cities and towns. So come on, let's head over for a visit with our friends at Wood Rogers to see what it takes to be a civil engineer and discover what it is that they do. Hope you're ready. Let's get right into it. So tell us, what is your job at Wood Rogers? Civil engineers build cities. They build all the infrastructure, which includes roadways, utilities, all of that, because we have to provide all of the things that you need before you can get a building built. So land surveyors fit in, in a support role for civil engineers. They need to know what the ground looks like. So as a land surveyor, using the drones and capturing the imagery, we recreate that landscape through a topographic map for the engineers to then start to design from. So they know the elevations of the land and they can design their site appropriately. I mostly focus on subdivision design. So I'll do all the utilities underground, a lot of roadway and sewer and storm drain and water design to get water to drain how, how we intend. I mostly do commercial work, which means any kind of commercial building, store, gas station, anything like that. It also includes multifamily buildings like apartment complexes. We can get real technical where I'm actually on the computer processing imagery data, drafting topographic maps. So land surveyors are definitely the first piece of the puzzle when it comes to a design project. I design all of the utilities up into a building, so water lines to your building, sewer connections to buildings, all the storm drain, roadways, driveways, parking lots, curb, gutter, sidewalks. Thanks, Jillian. Can you tell us why civil engineering is important? My job is important because it's something that we all use. We need roads to drive on. We need sewer to leave our house, flow downhill, and go to the appropriate treatment plant. We need water in our house. We need stormwater to be collected appropriately, treated appropriately, and discharged correctly. And so I think a lot of the things that civil engineers design are just part of the landscape, but they are critical for our everyday lives. Through the topographic mapping, the land surveyor may determine the slopes are too steep and that large buildings can't be placed on that site because you have to move too much dirt and it becomes very costly. There may be drainage issues. It may cause some serious issues if you were to build something there. We're delineating the boundary of the property and engineers need to know where that is so that we're not designing outside onto someone else's land. Topography is definitely super important. When we're designing a subdivision, let's say we've lifted it 10 feet in the air, so it's 10 feet higher than what the existing ground used to be. There's obviously some slope 
scrubbing and stuff that needs to happen to get back to the existing ground. You obviously don't want water flooding your house, so I do a lot of grading to ensure that doesn't happen and direct water in places that we actually want to drain water. If we didn't have pipes and structures that collect the storm drain and discharge it appropriately, we would have flooding all the time. We design everything so that all of our pipes flow downhill. A general rule of thumb when you're trying to drain a lot, for instance, is you want to maintain 1%. So what that means is for every 100 feet long, you want one foot vertical. When we survey the land and create a topographic map of that land, all we're really doing is just showing the engineer what currently exists on site. That's where it becomes critical that the engineers know in a flood event, how much water is gonna come down the slope, and then how does that water get off the site, and how does it get into a storm drain system where it's not gonna flood homes. That really is important. So what do you love the most about your job? I get to see what new projects are coming in town, what type of stores they're building. I get to do something different almost every single day. No two projects are the same. One of the coolest things about my job, something I really look forward to every day, is to physically go out in the field to a site and survey it, flying the drone, and I get to take those images back to the office and create a map out of it, and then it's an eagle-eye perspective of the site. It's a great job. You get to use your brain all day. You get to solve problems. You get to be a part of the development process and what gets built in our community. When I work on a project, it's really neat to kind of see that computerized drawing go from something that was on the screen at one point, seeing it actually constructed in real life. It's just really rewarding to be able to look at something and know I did that. I think it is so neat to drive around town and look at all of the different projects I worked on and go into those stores and park in the parking lot we designed and people using them and knowing that they work. I will be driving around outside and I'm like, look at that curve, why does that curve look like that? Who decided that that curve was gonna be that tall? You get to go outside and use high technology instruments, you get to use GPS instruments, you get to use drones, and then you get to take the information that those cool toys collected and then bring them back into the office and make some cool products out of that. It's how that all draws together that really makes it fun for me. Okay, and what about skills? What are some of the most important skills in your job? I think the most important skills for this job are attention to detail, problem solving, and asking questions. That's how we learn, that's how we move forward, and that's how we figure it out is asking questions. People have different brains and they think different and they have different perspectives, so relying on people is a great thing. You know, you're all on the same team, you work for the same company, trying to get the same thing done, so use that to your advantage. In order to bring an entire project together, it's definitely a team effort that involves a lot of coordination with with all kinds of people. We work directly with architects, electrical engineers, structural engineers, and we all work as a team to get a finished product out. It doesn't stop when our design is done. Our design is permitted and then a contractor picks it up and they go build it. And we have to work back and forth to come up with a solution together to get the site built correctly. Any other advice you might have for us? Ask your math and science teachers. If they don't know about civil engineering or they don't know a civil engineer, there is a huge community of teachers and they can reach out to each other and, and find a civil engineer that you can just talk to directly or ask questions. Take advantage of these STEM programs that we have now. That didn't exist when I was a kid. If you know of a group or you can get involved with one of those groups, those are the groups that are gonna foster your development in that and your urge to learn and creativity. Get interested in math and science. You don't have to, you don't have to be good at them. A lot of the math I do every day is pretty rudimentary, but it's great. It's a great skill to appreciate and practice. Most important math that I do every day is rise over run and slopes. I think I learned that in middle school, so it's kind of crazy that something that I learned so long ago is so crucial to what I do on a day-to-day -day basis. Just because you're not good at math doesn't mean you can't get better at math, and also you don't always need the hardest math problems to figure out engineering solutions. Sometimes it's the easiest. It's figuring out, does it go downhill? That's a, that's a really easy math problem. You know, you kind of just have to have the motivation and the, and the belief in yourself that you can push through it. Because I don't think anybody is necessarily not capable. If math isn't your thing, you know, again, you have to lean on people. You need to lean on tutors. You need to lean on classmates, people that are better at math than you are, you need to rely on those people. I had no idea how interesting and fun a civil engineering job can be. Thanks to Jillian, Kyle, and Michael, we found out about what they do at Wood Rogers and what it takes to become a civil engineer and how much fun it can be planning and designing the infrastructure of cities. 
I hope you had as much fun as I did finding out about these awesome careers at Wood Rogers. Well, that's about all the time we have, but I want to thank you all for joining us for this episode of PBS Reno STEM Works. You can find out more information about Wood Rogers at their website, woodrogers.com. For more information on these careers and others, visit pbsreno.org slash stemworks. And as always, don't forget to get out there and discover what it is that gets you going and on the right path to your STEM future.